Turkey, darling, come with me. We'll take you to the place that you want to be. Turkey, liquid alchemy. Seconds feel like hours, so ting in the flowers. Be patient, be patient. Of, uh, bartenders that win competitions that is great bartender let's go all the way over to uh lucinda because uh i know uh you have a, a couple of uh stories to tell and no sherry in my dap either because i know you're like this sherry master as well oh, <laughs> no way. i had the least experience out of all of these people on this panel it doesn't matter about that hey, <laughs> hey listen you could be like you could be like ryan ryan's been faking it for the for at least about 10 years and he's the best in the world according to well, what he just knows what to say it's a script <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's just a scientist. That's all he is, a scientist who makes good drinks. Anyway, let's go, Liz, isn't that three minutes to make you a cocktail? Okay. No. <laughs> well, that experience comes from me being from Colorado. And when I was growing up in Colorado, and I wasn't 21 yet, but uh, so that was a long, long, long time ago. Um, we had a, only a couple bars that were serving decent cocktails. And, uh, you know, I wasn't really necessarily ordering a daiquiri at that uh, bar. It was a dirty vodka martini, unfortunately. And uh, then we do uh, shots of uh, tequila, likely Patron. But then when I moved to New York City, I had the pleasure of meeting Sasha Petrosky. And um, they were using fresh lime juice or fresh juice in their cocktails. That changed my drinking game completely. So our daiquiri at uh, Milk and Honey and Little Branch um, is uh, two ounces or 60 mils of light rum. And we were using Florida Cagna back then, this is before the plantation came around, or Havana Club, if I could smuggle it in from the uh, long trips that I would go to. Um, and then, uh, <laughs> and then um, let's see, is it 30 mils of lime juice? So more tart and um, 25 mils uh, simple syrup. And that made it very easy to drink. In fact, we started doing snackeries. That's my classic training on drinking a daiquiri. Um, and so we had to mix it up a little bit and um, certain individuals that I, was hanging out with at the time, we're selling Fernet. So Fernet seemed to be something logical to incorporate into a daiquiri in order to like completely change it and ruin it. So <laughs> that scene stopped. Um, my daiquiri is full, full classic style. Like I just, I don't want to adulterate it. I do prefer light rum. And um, if anything, I will use an older, older, older rum that should never be uh, adulterated with lime juice and use that as my daiquiri base. Wow, nice. You still got a minute to go. I mean, you want to tell us, like, your, your, you told us about your first experience of a daiquiri. Which bar are you in now, or which bar were you in now? Where, well, we're still you? doing um, Middle Branch and Seaborn, which I'm in Red Hook, uh, Red Hook Brooklyn now, um, and it's doing really well despite the, uh, you know, big shutdown. We're doing Cocktails to Go, and uh, <laughs> a lot of people are ordering a daiquiri. In fact, um, Eamon Rocky decided that he wanted to partner up with me and start using Rockies as a modifier. So okay. we're doing that with um, the plantation pineapple and I'm using real McCoy three. Oh, I'm surprised Amy didn't say he wants a clarified um, daiquiri. Well, he, <laughs> he's, he's <laughs> moving from uh, the clarified milk punch to a liqueur. Okay. So he's liqueur, getting so I thought it was very interesting. So I, looking I, I to make money now. Really well. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you for gracing us with your presence. And uh, uh, of course, when I'm out there in the States, when I'm allowed back in the States, I'll be gracing your pres uh, presence and having a daiquiri with you. I want to oh, echo yes. what Shannon said. If you can't make me a good daiquiri, I'll just have a beer. Oh, that's cold. Um, <laughs> anyway, speak <laughs> since I was given abuse and the grief, uh, let's go over to uh, one of my favorite people in the world, um, Mr. Ryan. I cannot pronounce his surname, um, but he... <laughs> <laughs> Ryan's skills and his cocktails, his drinks, and his, and his uh, persona speak for himself. But one of the things I've never really associated you with is a daiquiri. So I'd love to hear your oh. interpretation of a daiquiri, Ryan. Give well, you three minutes um, from now. Da daiquiri is, uh, I'm going to echo a lot of what people have been talking about. And the daiquiri is, you know, one of my favorite drinks. It's the thing I go to. And it's the, the thing that to me is still an acid test for a bar. Um, but of course, I'm still here to bring a little bit of heresy. 
Um, so I'm going to do a slightly different version. Um, and I'm going to delve back into like the Adams a bit. And it's actually kind of going back to kind of where I started in like the origins of, of kind of my career back in Scotland. Um, and I remember one of the points of turning around to Jason Scott, who I know, I know a lot of people kind of count him as a mentor, but he was a huge mentor to me. Um, and one of the things that he, we, we were in discussion and I was saying, well, you know, particularly in the UK where people are abiding to certain formulas around drinks and you're getting certain ingredients, what changes if you go between different bars? Of course, you get the different atmosphere, you get the different bartenders looking after things. But one of the things that I really questioned was the lime. And this was pre white line days, but it was actually something that really informed what went on to become one of the, the original white line drinks. Um, and I remember kind of thinking in the UK, we were all kind of using great rums. We were probably using two to one sugar syrup because that was the norm back in 2007. Um, and, you know, we were probably using the same formula to make this drink. And the thing that would change was this lime. And because, although actually it's really sunny and lovely at the moment, we're not really a citrus growing company country. The thing that I noticed was the daiquiris in the UK tended to be quite plump because you're using these limes that have had to travel in a long way. They don't have as much kind of oils in the skin. They've been cold stored. They tend to be a little drier. They tend to be a bit on the bitter side. So you end up like notching up that sugar a little bit. And of course you shake the hell out of it because we all want our da daiquiris to be blisteringly cold. Um, but it ended up being this kind of plumper daiquiri. And one of the things I always wanted to explore was how do you have a different version of that drink? Because it seemed to be that that was the UK style of a daiquiri. Um, and one of the things that we tried to explore at White Lion, we obviously took the lime out of the equation and went, well, we don't want to just replicate a lime, but we want to look at a way of still bringing that acidity, that brightness, like the martini, like the old fashioned, it's the, I suppose, the way of exploring and opening out a core spirit. So if we turn to rum and, and look at how we can um, kind of open out that spirit, what can we do? Um, and this is what we came up with. I don't know if you all can see this. This is actually a proper old school bottle. Um, and this is the stone daiquiri from, from White Lion. Um, and what we wanted to do was kind of make a little bit more of an, uh, I suppose an austere, a little bit of a drier style, a cleaner daiquiri. Because we didn't, you know, I love those plump daiquiris and I love going to the, all of the bars around the UK and having somebody shake it up for me. But I also wanted to look at the fact that there could be alternative versions. Um, so we took this daiquiri, and this was super frosted and cold when I pulled it out earlier. Um, it's, it's been sitting out a little bit and we would simply pour it into an awesome frozen glass. And what we had was we took, um, actually this was a special bottle we did for when we launched some for, for a wine pop-up we did and we used Bacardi Heritage, but it was white Bacardi that we washed with some um, limestone and flint. 15 um, seconds. And mineral sugar, uh, a lime distillate. And essentially we just ended up with having something that was, I still think this is a classic daiquiri, but it was just, it sat adjacent to all of the daiquiris that I loved. It was still not this one, but it was still blisteringly cold. It's still snappy. It was still served in that way that you want it to be crisp. But instead of being plump like the other daiquiris we had in the UK, it kind of... All right, I'll cut Ryan off because, yeah, the guy makes good cocktails, but boy, he's going to chat. He's going to go on and on and on and on about this. And I, I didn't even see any lime inside there, but I know it tastes good because I've tasted these drinks. I just have to give him grief. But, you know, you would have gone. But anyway, guys, I think that was... Was that everybody? Who hasn't spoken about their daiquiri? Salvatore, don't lie, you have. Everyone's spoken about a daiquiri. Oh, amazing. I can't believe it. We actually went through everyone's drinks. But we got loads of questions uh, out there. So I'm going to see if we can unmute everybody so everyone can interrupt. Uh, I know Bianca's there. Bianca's the lady that's been controlling everything because I don't know how to do none of this. So I'm going to try and unmute everyone. And uh, let's see if we can ask, ask, ask some questions for the last part. Is there a way to unmute everyone all at the same time, Bianca? She's, she's like, I, I don't know if you get in there. Yes, there is. <laughs> is there like a button or is that to do, it, to do it manually? Let's answer yeah, some of these yeah. questions because there's some questions uh, out there. Um, oh, what was the question? It was, oh, yeah. Zan, how do you make your fresh banana syrup? Oh, yeah. I mean, honestly, if I told you I had it like a speck, I did it the same way every time. I'd just be lying to all of you. This time, I put like, I did a cup of brown sugar, cane sugar, a cup of water, and I boiled it when I had three bananas that were pretty ripe, overripe, mm -hmm. I should say, and boiled it for about 50 minutes. Um, then I cut the bananas, 
inside of the pan and just let it uh, steep some more and just kept it on there until I felt it tasted good. Okay, so that's fair. There's no, I like it, like like I said, I ate a bartender, man. I just kind of playing around with this shit in my kitchen. <laughs> okay, someone someone asked if you were to make a daiquiri, not you, Zan, but the whole panel. Um, if you were to make a daiquiri of coconut flavor, but you wanted coconut flavor to be one of the main flavors in the daiquiri, hence coconut daiquiri, what would your options be? I've tried young Thai coconut water for a syrup, but the flavor is not strong enough. So, I don't know. No. I would me personally, want, I'd use a coconut rum. Yeah, you gotta use a coconut rum. Yeah, I would say. Alternatively, a coconut oil fat wash works. Right. Oh, coconut oil fat wash. Coconut like oil that. fat wash, super simple. Yeah. 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 Um, and so also, so a coconut sugar will work. I don't know oh, if you guys have work. Yeah, it works very nicely. Okay. Okay. What about Mr. Scientist, Ryan? What do you say? <laughs> oh, I'm all about the coconut rum for this. Like, it's oh, just. Uh, yeah. It, it, it's what you want for it, really. It's, um, it's not even a guilty pleasure. It's delicious. Uh, yeah. <laughs> don't miss it about. And a proper coconut rum because I know yeah. you guys in the States think that bottle there you that go. out there is a white bottle beginning with Matt and ending in Alibu is a rum. Yes, it's it's not. It's a liqueur. It's not a rum. So don't use that. <laughs> use a rum. <laughs> guys, for the coconut oil wash, you got to qualify it. It should be unrefined if you're seeking Ooh. the aromas. If it's Ooh, a refined like coconut oil, you don't get the aromas. So there's yeah. something lacking there. Okay. Uh, yeah, I like that. Some good good words of advice. Okay, Daniel Via says, "Any oh, get out of the way, listen to stop. Get out of my way. I'm asking questions. Any tips or thoughts on clarified? This must be to the scientists to clarify daiquiris and how to retain or reinstall a juicy full mouthfeel to the cocktail if aiming to work with clarified juice while maintaining full translucency. Get that." Actually, I think what it's trying to say is, uh, there are, see, I'm a fan of using lime and, and having it be a classic daiquiri. If you, to me, if you would like kind of strip out and you're trying to clarify it, you're removing mm. all of the, yeah. the kind of body and the deliciousness of the daiquiri. Um, right. If you want to look for alternative, I think that's the reason why I, I try to explore a different style of daiquiri. I don't think it's about trying to clarify it per se. Because mm. I think you then start out, I think if you want to have a cleaner style of daiquiri, take a different approach instead of trying to strip out what's at the core of it. Agree. Mm, okay. totally I agree with Ryan, actually. You know, like the beauty of it is having all those elements to kind of like crash into the first sip that you take of that cocktail that takes you to the Caribbean for sure mm. and back mm. and forth. And that's the beauty of it. The refiner daiquiri, it's, it's an intense hard work. You basically are killing your limes and the freshness of your citrus. But, you know, there's other ways that you can do, like, a, a lime cordial and enhance your daiquiri with it, if you may. But a daiquiri is a daiquiri, and that's the beauty of it, to have a fresh daiquiri that bursts in your palate when you sip it. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, um, Jamal Bowen, I think from Barbados, is saying, if a daiquiri is made of aged dark rum, how would we differentiate between this cocktail and a rum sour? I suppose, Salvatore, you know all the classics. What difference between a daiquiri and a rum sour if a daiquiri is made with dark rum? Well, I think, you know, what he meant is the fact that uh, it's sour as the spirits, it's um, uh, lemon juice, is sour, and there's a sugar. It's not different yeah. from what it is that really. But the difference is, it is uh, uh, the heritage, the history. You know, right. why do we want to change something that has been around for 100 years only because we can associate the dust that cocktail with a sour, or let's not forget that the sour is the, the grand grandfather, uh, you know, Brandy Crust, for example. You go far, far back as in 1850, it's the first initial uh, introduction of the, of the lemon juice. So, what do we call every drink that we know? Uh, different, I think, you know. If a classic is a classic, let's not try to associate with something else that. that uh, you know, daiquiri is the style of sour, but okay. sour. Uh, Karen, Karen is uh, basically asking, uh, what is the uh, what's the difference using a caster sugar making uh, a daiquiri or using simple syrup? Are we talking about texture? Because there's been some people that use simple syrup here. Some people use caster sugar or sugar. I use agave. Uh, is it about texture? Anyone? Definitely. Who uses simple? Who uses caster sugar here? 
or uh, sugar. I, I think, think Julio does. does. Yeah, Julio does. Pass the sugar all the way. All the time. Yeah, granulated sugar. Granulated yeah. sugar. Yeah. 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 Are you guys doing it for the texture or are you doing it for um, other texture, flavor? Flavors. Are we using Flavors. syrup? Yeah. I'm using syrup for dilution. Um, no. Well, I mean, I didn't get a whole lot. We, none of us got a whole lot to talk, obviously, but with the, the cane sugar is and using a two part sugar to one part water syrup is because of texture. Mm. Um, I find that a richer syrup or something like a granulated uh, sugar in, in the daiquiri is going to give it much more texture. Um, you're, it's less water. Um, and the, the texture also is coming, like I was saying at the end of my little spit, was that it's the, the richness of the sugar, um, how dense the sugar is, and then also um, the energy that you're putting into your shake. So um, if you have a, a flabby shake or you're using wet ice or using a, a glass with very large surface area, um, those are all things that are going to give you very um, flabby results. Okay. So um, it's all about the energy that you put into your shake, how you shake it, um, the dryness yes. that you your ice. Um, but also the densest of your sugar. So if you're using simple sugar, you're going to use more of it. Um, but if you're using, you know, it just, it really, again, daiquiri is a very personal thing, uh, okay. in my opinion. So it's, again, like uh, some of you had said, it's a very, ask how they like it, dry or, or a little more sweet, blah, blah, blah. But I think it's the energy you put into the shake. It's the sugar content or the sugar style. And then it's the, um, the, the glass, uh, the size of the glass. Okay, cool. Someone's asked, uh, <laughs> what is uh, your worst daiquiri memories, guys? Ooh, worst daiquiri memories. None. <laughs> they're all good? Are you saying, Juan, they're all good? All good, man. It's daiquiri. You, you, you've been Life spoiled. Life better when you, got, when you have a daiquiri next to you, please. Unless you do it well. When they called me the daiquiri and forgot to put the sugar in it. Yes. Oh, wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. I mean, funny enough, David, there's a, there's a very famous, there's a very famous distiller, uh, rum maker from Barbados. I can't remember his name, but uh, he's known for not liking sugar in his rums. And, but he likes a cocktail every now and again. He goes to a bar, I think it was yeah. in, I think it was in Singapore, something like that, and the bartender put, specifically didn't put sugar inside the daiquiri because of that. <laughs> it was the worst that great ever tasted. <laughs> it was the worst drink it ever tasted. It was like, shit, put some sugar in my cocktail. It is a cocktail. I like it in my rum, but I like it in my bloody daiquiri. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, sorry about yeah. that on behalf of Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose it's all subjective. Or someone asks you for the daiquiri with no, I, I'd like a daiquiri or a gimlet or anything in that template. But I don't want any sugar, and they fight with you about it, and you're like, "All right, I don't want to be a jerk, but mm. this is a lesson. Maybe they might learn, and they they drink it, and they're like, Ooh. It's like that sour test. So like, All right, this is why." Well, Can we talk? Shannon, Can we you were about to say something. <laughs> Shannon, you were about yeah, to say. Yeah, I was just going to say that my worst experience had more to do with the service than the drink itself. So oh, for okay. me, it's like. As a bartender, if your service is off, it doesn't matter how good your drink is because you've already mm. ruined the taste for me, right? So, yeah. in um, Cape Town, that's for deputy, and the mm. bartender picked up a lemon, and I was like, sir, I like it fine. And he gives me this look like, oh, woman, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, man, you know, it's fine, but I, I would love it if you could accommodate me as a guest. Wow. Wow. Guys, what about when you get the super famous answer? Oh, we don't have the ingredients to make a daiquiri in the bar. Yeah, or, no strawberries. Or, or this one. How about, how about <laughs> this one? Oh, we don't have a frozen machine. Um, we have a blender, sensor. yeah? We have a blender. <laughs> I, I want to say, yeah, like, okay. Ian, Ian, I yeah. want to say that I really agree with Martin K saying that the best daiquiri you can have is the one you enjoy with your friends, but it's a very personal. Correcto. Correcto. The best daiquiri is the one you like. You know, there's yeah. no wrong. This is not a bad daiquiri. Of course, you have it from a, a frozen machine, a strawberry with a lot of sugar, probably yeah. not, no, yeah. no citrus, no citrus, it's, it's bad. But it, you know, it's not a real bad daiquiri. And I agree that you have to shake, I agree with Gillian, you have to shake it hard, you have to smile, and never double strain, my personal. No, do not double strain the daiquiri. It should never be double strain anyhow, as long as it doesn't have a solid ingredient. I, but I, I know. Know. 
one, one of the worst, if I may say, one of the worst uh, the daiquiri that I tried is one that uh, somebody decided to make the daiquiri and it shook for three seconds. One, two, three, and four. Seconds. Yeah, no, no, uh, That's, uh, that's uh, I think, one of the reasons you need to shake so hard. That's like so a rematch hard. daiquiri. Yeah, it's a rematch daiquiri. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're in a hurry, Sam. Maybe you made them nervous. 15 seconds daiquiri. Was it Salvatore, you made them nervous. Bobby Hillston. Oh, maybe I'm a little nervous. It's the fact that for me, in the daiquiri, it has to be done with the granulated sugar. I think that that granulated sugar gives the, the bond that you want, the texture, that when you drink something, it's totally different from any other sour. It is something that, um, I mean, as I say, you know, I went all the way to let uh, sh uh, sugar come from Cuba all the time. I had at least uh, every other month, I had the two kilos of sugar come to my bar, flying all the way from Cuba. Uh, a, and this was from the time of the, from the Lensra, from my very first experience that I went to Cuba in 1997, and that is the daiquiri. The daiquiri, which was done in a way, not just in the blend, because I asked the bartender then, I didn't want to blend it, but I wanted in a classic way. And he went and, and I saw the sugar that he was using, which it was, it's almost like the, the mojito. I mean, there is a difference in mojito in uh, in Cuba, and there is a difference in mojito that you do here. It is the the herba buona, the mint that they use, and uh, and that's what it is. The sugar, the granulated sugar that you find there, it's amazing. It really yeah. is a function of the of the of the daiquiri. I mean, the, most, the line, huh? The most it's of the not, sugar you you find in other countries, by Cuba, is a beet beet sugar. From yeah. meat, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, a lot, yeah, and, and yeah. sugar, yeah, sugar from sugar cane is the one that th really tastes good. As yeah. Gillian, Gillian said before that, you know, like uh, sugar cane sugar is much better than in daiquiris and mojitos than than the beet sugar. Yeah, yeah. no doubt. Thank you. Yeah. It's the fact that you have something that comes from Cuba. I mean, the rum is the rum, but if you have something that you say, "Oh, I made an effort. I, I bring this all the way from Cuba," only because you could tell about it. I think in the perception of the customer it is something that you really, it's a mind blowing. And that's what made my daiquiri quite different from any other one that the, in those that's, days. That's the reason why, uh, that's the reason why if, uh, if Julio is shaking a daiquiri and Zan shaking a daiquiri, Julio's always going to taste better because he's from Cuba and Zan's from Jamaica. <laughs> it's true. Coming from Jamaica. Both. Both I, I, I do a Jamaican daiquiri. No, I don't do yeah, a Cuban daiquiri. I do a Jamaican needs daiquiri. From, <laughs> needs to be from Cuba, man, with that shake. Give it that, that, that Santiago yeah. shake, man, from I don't, I don't that have that, that swag as the Cubans do, you know? I know. And, it, and the other thing as well is Salvatore, no, because he actually drank with Constantin Ribalagua. He actually was there as a, as a young man, so. <laughs> Help me uh, say before, what do you think I've got to feel like this? <laughs> <laughs> and this background behind me, just to make me feel at home, you know, that's it. <laughs> right, we've got about eight minutes before they kick us off. Um, right, let's get some more questions. Because of the complexity of honey and varietals, would you recommend uh, a varietals of a lighter style daiquiri or some heavier style daiquiris? Um, so using lighter style sweeteners for lighter rums instead of heavier rums? I don't know if anyone wants to use that. I use agave. I use agave because I like that earthiness. I like that natural sweetness. But that's just on the Burrell dac. If I'm doing a, a regular daiquiri, I will, I will use granulated sugar or sugar syrup depending on where I'm making them. But does anyone have any? Uh, I'll any take that one. one. I'll take that one. Um, I think you know. Actually, uh, uh, somebody was saying early on before. Not every day is the same, and you know, of course, there's seasons, there's weather changes, and all that. You know, if I were to take a daiquiri during the winter, I would like a, a rum that has more character, more texture, Ooh, darker okay. rum versus a lighter rum in the summer that I want to be very refreshing and very light. You know. So there's a big uh, plethora of daiquiris that can be made from light to dark to heaviest. And, you know, it's up to you. Same with the sweeteners. You can choose from agave like yourself, sugar, simple syrup, coconut sugar, uh, mm. honey. It depends, you know. So it, it, it all depends. It's the, mm. It depends on the occasion, mm. the moment, the bar. Who are you with? What are you wearing? <laughs> what kind of hat are you putting on today? Et cetera. But what we agree all, and to echoes Martin, Julio, and Jillian, is in my opinion, when I teach bartenders to whoever is washing, the dietary has four ingredients, and that is rum, sugar, lime, and love. Because we make it from the heart. 
That's yeah. what makes the experience. That's yeah, what man. makes people fall in love with the pop. Yeah, man. You could be a Jamaican. Yeah, man. Like wow. <laughs> wow. Was that Colin? Was that Colin? Are you Colin clapping? Voice? Are you Is clapping, Colin? Colin? All right, listen, I'm clapping. Colin's I'm clapping. been in the background happy. <laughs> overseeing everything, boy. Like, like the Watcher in the Marvel comics. That's what you've been doing, man. You've been watching <laughs> over, man. Just... <laughs> hey, I'm always getting involved, bruv. You know that. I know, man. You're involved, man. But listen, since you're involved, tell us about your daiquiris, man. Tell us. Oh, tell us about... come on. Oh, man. Yeah, it's really Colin. funny. A Brit in New York is like it's like Shine Ed, Sting, all those people, man. Somewhere yeah, in New no, York. no, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here in Bedside in Brooklyn, and my daiquiri today was you know the run that I had to hand, uh, which what was did you have to Cardi hand? Maestro. Uh, well, they pay your wages, you can say. And um, I got I got guilted actually into um, saving all of my citrus. Um, that I've been using for the last week. Oh, I okay. boiled that down with a little bit of uh, water, added a little bit of sugar, and I used that as a nice. citrus base. Nice. And I uh, shook it up, and um, as you can see, it's almost finished. <laughs> it's finished now. It's the third one. <laughs> <laughs> see, and that's the other criteria, I think, for a daiquiri. If you can't drink at least three daiquiris in a bar, you're either in the wrong place or it's the wrong drink because a daiquiri should be so refreshing. It's so tasty. It's nice and balanced. You just sip, sip, sip. Of course, the friends, as, a, as Martin was saying, as Hulu was saying, of course, the friends are going to be an important part of that. But you should be able to sip a daiquiri and just finish it without even thinking. It's like order another one. It just comes and it's just like a continuous yeah. drink. Because that's how, that's, that's, that's for me, that, that's what represents a real daiquiri. If I, if I can only drink one daiquiri, it's, I'm in the wrong place, or it's the wrong, it's the wrong drink, wrong ingredients, or, uh, um, or <laughs> I'm not alive <laughs> at the end of the day. I think you have to, you have to have a couple. Ian, um, surely, Ian, surely the Ron, the Ron Collins should get a mention also. Yeah, it's just, it's so, just a yeah. daiquiri with soda if you want it to last a little bit longer. Yeah, looking at the old recipe, it was a Ron Collins, wasn't it? It was like some, some rum. Uh, Hang some on, did someone mention Collins? <laughs> well done. Well played. As soon as Rom Collins comes, Colin pops up. Pops up. Wait, wait. I think this is a. We're just we're starting to wrap down now, guys. You know what? You guys. I mean, you guys are legends anyway, and you're legends for me. And that's. I mean, this is one of the reasons why I love this industry because my extended family and it's all of you guys. Um, and even you people, Lucinda, I'm just meeting you for the first time, and I love you already. I'm gonna come to have a drink with you when I'm out in Bosco the States. Um, but the, yeah, the rest of you guys are just legends. I bow down to you. Thank you for sharing your time. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. There's so many people around the world that are going to be benefiting from this and being inspired um, as well. Uh, yeah, we'll have to do this again, uh, maybe in a couple of weeks with uh, another cocktail. Maybe we'll yeah, send some ideas of another cocktail. Do we'll, we'll do it again with another drink. Let's no, do cocktail. I'll just do it with the no. Mai Tai. I know Ryan can, some, Ryan can do some crazy shit with Mai Tais, and Salvatore is <laughs> probably going to bring out the Ray Nephew 17 year old. Martin's uh, got a better Ray Nephew 17 year old, yeah. the one that actually got sold. So, <laughs> you know, and Zan's just going to bring out Jamaican rum. Um, <laughs> of course, uh, yeah, of course, <laughs> Jesse's going to be Jesse's going to be sleeping, but he'll, he'll be awake. He'll be awake. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get him up. Perhaps we can do all. Perhaps we can do an all Cuban uh, ovation to the Pagan yeah, Club. We lost yeah. it, and, you know, Audrey nice. and everybody. I think yeah. it's, it's, we own that to them. Yeah, well, we'll think of some ideas to do some do yeah. some stuff. But yeah, it's great. I think it's been absolutely brilliant. But thank you again for sharing your your pearls of wisdom and uh, and uh, have a great rest of the day wherever you are in the world. I know Jesse, you're going to sleep now because it's like two o'clock, <laughs> two o'clock in the morning. It's like time. It's it time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And us, us, us in the UK, we're about to jump on other calls and that's having have some more drinks and uh, and uh, and you guys in the states, you guys are just getting into the world, getting into the day. Getting started. He's got his mask on. Thank you, Ian. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Hey, thank you, Ian, man. Bye, bye. 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 Um, if you are watching some Facebook live or if you're watching this Facebook after we finish, then um, yeah, cheers. Send the comments in. We'll answer them even after the actual live live show is gone. I, my back is finished, so I'm about to jump into another one. But we're going to do this again. We'll do this in a couple of weeks' time, maybe in about another two weeks' time, and talk about another cocktail. So thank you for uh, giving up your time. Thank you for joining me and my, and my friends from around the world. And uh, yeah.
let's do this again. Yeah, man. I'm going to the beach, beach now. Oh, no. Salvatore. The Oasis jumps in. <laughs> you got to mute him completely next Anna, time. Anna. <laughs> Anna. Oh, wait. Let me stop. Yeah. Can you stop? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> I want to see that a piano in Ghana. You, you're going to have it in Ghana. <laughs>